And uh, thank you for everyone who's come along tonight. And I have sent out a tweet or two, so I'm kind of hoping that um, we might have some extra people popping in. I'd just like to say welcome to everyone and thank you to Steve Hargaden for providing this space for us to be able to present these webinars because uh, whether we get a few people or a lot of people, uh, we are recording these sessions to be able to share and to use later and um, that's a really valuable resource and we do appreciate that. So I'm going to hand over to Shambles Guru, that's the title on the screen. This is Chris and uh, he's got a wealth of information about apps for all sorts of purposes that he's going to share with us tonight. Okay. I, I have to come clean here, boys and girls, is that I don't have a set path of things to do. So you have the power to take us in the direction that you want us to go as far as these apps are concerned, which might be questions to do with how do you do this, or what apps are good for volcanoes, or, um, or whatever, tips, you know, keyboard keyboard tips, whatever, whatever you'd like, whatever direction you'd like us to, to go in, uh, put some suggestions into it. Otherwise, I should just meander about things and uh, or even play with my uh, uh, my uh, sound uh, board that I've also got on my iPad. <laughs> Which This can drive people crazy, these soundboards, um, but they can be really good fun as well uh, um, as far as giving feedback in the classroom or in, a, in a, a, a teacher's workshop, but it can drive people crazy. That The app I just used to make that is this one here called iButtons. And uh, when I launch that, uh, let me just touch it, when I launch that, um, I'm actually at my at some favourites now. I'm not displaying them all because there's actually a few in here which have undesirable words. Um, uh, so, so that's why I'm using uh, favourites on here. Um, and a reminder about yeah, all these buttons make sounds. They're uh, they're, they're they're great fun. Um, the uh, um, just to let you know how I'm getting my iPad onto the screen, but I suspect you have, uh, uh, I suspect you all know already, but I just reinforce that. I'm using an app called Reflection, and the app just goes onto my MacBook Pro, which I'm using to connect to Blackboard Collaborate, so I'm using my MacBook Pro. The software Reflection is on my MacBook Pro, and there's nothing on my iPad. Because as soon as you put reflection on your MacBook, and it also goes on Windows machines as well, as soon as you put it on the Windows machine or your MacBook and you run it, then immediately that happens, uh, this appears on your iPad. Let me just close this, these buttons, and close that. And I'm going to do a double click on the front button on the iPad, which brings up all the apps that I've got running. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm just repeating what you know already. And if I scroll now, the buttons at the bottom, along to the left. Yeah, I'm expecting things to refresh slowly, and that's why I'm going to uh, try not to go too quickly. So you can see here on the bottom now there are um, volume controls. This is a brightness control here, and. Uh, so you can move that. This pointer you can see is the pointer from my MacBook, not the pointer on my iPad. So you can't, you know, it doesn't do anything here except point. Um, but what happens if you have reflection on your your Windows machine or your MacBook Pro, which could be project, uh, connected to the projector at the front of the class, then this button magically appears. It's normally not there. And you can see that on there it's saying, instead of using my Mac, my iPad, I've clicked here, which says Chambles Mac, and 
I've clicked on mirroring. So this is this image is mirroring from my iPad. Uh, the uh, say so it works on a on a, a Windows machine as well. Um, I did a a webinar in an earlier uh, in the, the Wednesday series and the Oz series, um, and uh, a couple of months ago. It's in my YouTube channel, which is shambles. Uh, YouTube. dot com slash shambles guru, uh, but it's also on the Aus Australia series website. We did a whole webinar about how to connect your iPads to display on a projector at the front of the class or at the front of the the assembly hall or wherever you want it to go. This isn't my preferred method of connecting. My preferred method of connecting is to use um, an Apple TV. But if you look at the webinar, the earlier webinar where we spent an hour just on connectivity issues, then uh, you'll see how that was done. But my preferred method of connecting wirelessly is by using an Apple TV for 99 US dollars. Plug it into your projector, uh, and your iPad has to be on the same network. But of course, the nice thing is uh, that any students who have an iPad or uh, um, uh, an iOS device or an, an, an iPhone, without them moving from their seats, you can also allow them, through the same method of projecting to the Apple TV or to this, like I'm doing now, to the reflector app on which is connected to the to the projector. Um, Simon, that's a good one. The school network is often too congested for smooth mi mirroring. Now, because I'm going in and out of schools, I get through that by I also carry with me a, uh, an Airport Express and plug that in in the classroom. And the Airport Express, and I don't think they're very expensive. I think they're, st they're also about $99. Um, if I use the Airport Express, that creates its own network inside the classroom, and I can use that, and that's and that's okay. Okay, um, and I plug the Airport Express often in just into uh, a, a LAN, a network uh, socket somewhere in the room if there is one. So uh, that's how we connect in there. Now, has anybody got any particular requests on what sort of direction we should go now? Because I'm, I'm really, I'm really very, very open. I've written a few things down, but um, if I, if we do something which you're particularly interested in now, that would help, or well, I'll just meander on. Type in chat if there's something that you particularly like to look at. So organizing collections, Carol, that would be that would that would follow on from a couple of weeks ago, wouldn't it, when we were looking at creation? Have installed reflector on my school laptop works well even with animations and video. Apple TV works better. Agree, Simon. That's the order I go as well. English and history apps. Okay, we will look at that as well. If you get any others in the next 45 minutes, then just throw them in there or even come into the microphone. Ebook creation. Okay. Um, okay, that's that's good. All right, let me look look at. So I'm going to try and cover all of those. Let me look at this front screen first. Um, I love seeing what people have done on the front screen. I have on this iPad now about 1,000, over 1,600 apps. Now, if I actually found somebody who had that many apps on their machine, I'd be very suspicious because you can't use them all. But I do a lot of reviewing. And uh, uh, I do a lot of reviewing, and a lot of them are free. Now. I mentioned this in the last uh, um, app smackdown we had. I'm going to go into this folder here, which says apps free. And I'm guessing that's going to. Can you just put a Y in when that's raised up on your screen? Just put a Y into chat or something or a smiley face or uh, just to see how quickly it's uh, it's uh, resing on your screen. I'm in the outback of Thailand, so the connectivity is not so good. Carol, you're the only one that can see this. Okay, Ness. I meant Simon. Thanks. I 
I in here um, these are all apps <laughs> these are all apps which uh, help me f help me find apps I'll just turn my air condition off um, the and, and my favorite there's one here called apps gone free and uh, I I get a notification from them every day where they list <laughs> it's 40 degrees C outside here at the moment um, this I there are so many apps which I have on my machine which cost money but they go free for 24 hours and uh, that can save you and your colleagues and your students tons of money because there's no catch to it you just have to ca get to the app while it's still free in the sort of 24 or 48 hour period it's free so one of my recommendations if you don't have this app then uh, uh, get it it's free and you'll get notifications on when there are free apps app zoo pro updates regularly okay do so you see there are a number here which you can go, but but that's my favourite. I see some people like others more, like this one called 100% off. Uh, is is quite liked, and freebies here as too. But you tend to use things. I've even got one here, and you may notice that this one is called Iconit, and you probably can't read it; it's too small. Iconit, and it's got a bar across it saying new, which means I've downloaded it, but I haven't even looked at it yet. I haven't even reviewed it yet to see what it's worth. And I do that with lots. A lot of my apps, not a lot, but a fair number of apps, you'll see they're new apps, which I, I downloaded because they were free, but I haven't even had time to look at yet. Um, see, what is interesting for me here is a bit of a challenge. I thought, if I've got this screen and I wanted to share this screen to you now, or if I wanted to share it to a class. So I've got something here, and it might be a, a picture of a volcano or something. I've got something on the screen here. Oh, actually, let me see if I can do something to make it clearer to you. Tell me if this makes a difference. This this picture on the screen looks like an iPad, and it's got my name, Shambles Guru, there, and some links. But it's probably best you can display it without the frame. And let me just switch that frame off. Let me just... I'm, I'm clicking get rid of frame. Does that make a difference to you? Is that clearer or worse or the same on your screen without the frame? What is better for you? No frame or the frame? <laughs> yes, well, can I do it a little bit and wear glasses? No frame. Okay, I'll leave it with no frame. I suspect that's the case. Also, um, okay, so that's a useful learning point for me. I, I also have the option of making it full screen, but I'm not going to do that because if I make it full screen my end, then it's going to cover up the chat uh, in Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, but if I was doing this in a class and projecting it, I suspect I'd make this full screen. Now, I was wondering what I should do with with this? How can I get this to you? Now, guys, with your experience, if you were in my situation, how would you get this picture to you now? And of course, it could be an educational thing. It could be a whiteboard where we've we've just done some collaborative work on the whiteboard, but on the iPad. Um, but how would you get it to you? I'm curious. I'm I've got a couple of ideas, but they may not be the best ideas. Take an image and store it in the gallery and send by email. So do a screenshot, Carol. So that's, you press the two buttons, or any two buttons on the iPad. Do a screenshot. It goes in your, uh, in your um, uh, images, in your photos, and then email it. OK, screenshot. Emailing, if you're sat there with a class of kids, emailing it, you need to know all their emails, and that's going to be awkward. And now for you, I don't know your emails, and I want to get it to you. Uh, any others? Yeah, not email. Any others? Because you want to do it quick and fairly quick and easy. I like that. Share in Evan. Share in Dropbox or Google Drive, which is yeah, which is just yeah, Google Drive. Uh, 
Okay. I. That's good. I'm not sure what the best answer to this is. Let me show you another answer. I'm going to do a screenshot, so it will probably f flash. The flash was so short, I'm not even sure whether you would see it on the screen. And then if I go to, f to my photos, let me press photos, and here's my photos that I've taken, my screenshots. You saw the cow. Actually, this is a learning experience for me, which is brilliant. Um, so here it is here. Now you can't see it. Now if I touch it, then, oh, it's gone full screen. How interesting. It's gone full screen for me. Oh, that was interesting. It went full screen. What did you see when I did when I made the image full? Could you still see it? It's an elephant's button. <laughs> now, maybe somebody can tell me what happens because that's that for, for me. It was full there. Okay, so we can't see chat. So I'm I'll, I'm not going to be able to see chat for a couple of minutes. And hopefully, you can still see things. If it goes wrong, somebody tell me using audio. We can still see Chris. Um, so Chris photos. Chat. We can still see. And here's chat. a screenshot. I. Yes. But you. Um, uh, I can't. My end. So anyway, I'll keep going, and I'll, when I come out of images, I suspect I'll see. Say again. Sorry, it's a bit slow tonight. Um, we can see your. So iPad anyway, you can... at full screen, but we can still see the chat. And AJ also has a question for you. Okay, well I can't see chat, AJ. Let me just finish this 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 bit to see how I get this screen to you. Um, one option I think I would use is um, if we come up here. Uh, this comes up. Oh, it hasn't come up on your screen. I think it's come up on my screen. And then has it come up? No. What I'm getting here is a drop-down menu, which is allowing me to Twitter. I don't think you're seeing it. Are you seeing me twittering this page now? Now I can't see chat, so someone's going to have to tell me with the microphone. No, I don't no, see it. Not at the okay, okay. Well, what I'm doing is I'm on the top of this picture, which is in my in the pictures. There's a drop-down menu which allows me to tweet it, and I'm just going to tweet this my iPad home screen. Now you can't see this. And I'm going to hashtag it with um, hashtag Oz series. My iPad home screen, hashtag Oz series. And I'm going to put uh, hashtag webinar too. Now you're not seeing this, obviously. Let me just send that. It's gone. Okay, now we go back to where we were. So what I did is I t I went to the image, and I and when you see the image, this is my not proper screen now because it will move around. Um, but I sent it by Twitter using a hashtag, uh, and that's one way of getting it out to to students. Another way. So you now, if you do, a, if you go to, to Twitter. And you search for you. You follow me, or you go to my stream, uh, twitter.com/shamblesguru, or you search for the has hashtag, the hashtag, the hashtag Oz series. You'll see an image of this. Uh, so this that will be a, a plus for being a Twitter user. But your kids may not be able to use Twitter, but they don't have to, of course. Because you can go to somewhere like, uh, let me do this. Let me see if this app works. I'm going to try this app. See whether it's going full screen or staying there. Oh, it's gone sideways. Oh, no, it's not. So HTTP colon slash slash tweet chat. Dot com 
Now if you go there to that site, there it is big so you can see it. If you go to that site and then even if you're not a, a Twitter user, it will show a hashtag stream. So if you go to that site and you type in Oz A O Z series S E R I E S, then you should see my, my Twitter. So even for students who don't have Twitter accounts, they can still see the hashtag stream by going to there. There's a health warning with this is that Tweet Chat have said that Twitter are changing the API, how they allow people to access Twitter, and that Tweet Chat may not work. Um, oh, thanks for that, Carol. Tweet Chat may not work in the in the future, which is sad because that's my favourite way of showing people uh, uh, how to uh, see a Twitter stream, even if you're not a Twitter, uh, you don't have a Twitter account. Um, so that's good. Now another way to share it. Let me introduce another way. Notice here. Actually, these four folders here. It says data transfer one, data transfer two, remote one, and remote two. Are some of my favourite apps in here. Let me look at data transfer one first of all. Now I know I would bet money that you're going to recognise a lot of these. Um, you know, we've got Evernote, uh, we've got Ever the Clip, which is specifically for the iPad to put stuff into Evernote. We've got Dropbox, which is a favourite. SugarSync, which is the same as Dropbox, but they came along later and so haven't made the made the cut. There's Box, there's Microsoft SkyDrive, there's, there's, there's all of these. So these are ways of getting data, saving data and getting data around. I'm hearing a microphone. Uh, yes, somebody's eating um, their lunch I, while they're I eating say, their... Yeah. Isaiah had a question. Her hand's still up. I'm not sure if that question is being answered or not. Oh, okay. AJ, go ahead. What was it? Is that an elephant's Sorry, it, yes, was it was. <laughs> no, it was more <laughs> along the lines of you were talking about how to share things. Um, I would do pretty much what you were heading towards. Take a screenshot, have an image of it, and then share it. And this day and age, I find there's no one place that's ubiquitous for everyone, so you have to try and be as flexible as possible. So if they like the email, share it with email. If they've got no Dropbox or know how to access a URL um, or Twitter, you know, tw you said you'd share it with a Twitter, but then I get blank looks from a, an awful lot of people who say, well, I don't do Twitter, so how am I going to get things? Yeah, that's great. And, I, and, it, and you could actually use Twitter and not tell them and just tell them to go to tweetchat.com slash whatever it is and just say you'll find it there. And then, the, you know, so, it, so yeah. I, actually, I, I, Twitter is such a powerful tool. Um, here's a few others. There's an app here, Simple Transfer, which is designed just for you to share uh, photos with other iPads which are on the on the web, uh, sorry, on the same Wi-Fi network in the same room. Uh, yeah, I think cloud computing is more than just those particular things, though. That could be a good debate. And there are others here. There's, uh, but I'm not going to go into them all. There's just too many. But that's a good one. But but what I'm going to mention is <coughs> I put my favourite apps down here, so they're on the toolbar here. So they stay on every screen. And you can have folders on down here, which, which ironically I didn't realize for a, at least a year. Uh, and, and so the things I use a lot are down here. So let me look in here. Now, one of my favorite ones is this one, Air Sketch. I don't think it's free, but it's one of my favorite ones. Now, if I just click on that, it's a, it's a whiteboard. Um, and I can, I think I can just write on here. Can I just write on here with my finger? Yeah. Uh, hello, our series. I wonder how long that's taking to get to your machines. Um, and, I'm not, uh, and it's fairly, you know, down here, the bottom, we've got different colors. Um, but, and, and here, I can import a picture. So if I go to my camera roll, 
and find that screenshot that I took. Actually, there's a lovely cat. I've had that cat 15 years. It's a sad story. He died a couple of weeks ago. We are heartbroken, but very sad. Um, yeah, I'll try and go slowly it's, it's, uh, so they have time to, to res up. Um, but there's a screenshot that I took uh, of my front page. So if I touch that, it's imported now into this app. Oh, how to put an easy one, Carol. How to put a folder into into the the the, sh the shelf at the bottom. You just drag it down with your finger. You can just put your finger on it so it starts to shake. And I can't show shaking on here because of the time lag. Um, put your finger on it and shake, and you just drag it down onto the onto, onto the bottom. Um, so this is the image which I put into this app. We can make it full screen here. And I can still use, and I've done that, so I'm going to click on done. Now, this is going to confuse you because that looks like my, my home screen, but it's not. It's a picture of my home screen in the app. But it means now that I can annotate on here. So I can say, what about this one, and what about doing that? Um, if I use the whiteboard and didn't import the image, I could actually um, draw things like volcanoes and show how a volcano worked. But the magical thing about this particular app is, is well, I could take a picture with using the camera. So I could have taken a picture of the class and then wrote, and then have a picture of the class here and put the names on it or something like that. But the magic button is this button here in the bottom left-hand corner. Let me touch that. Now, I'll read that to you in case it's too small to see. It says server address http colon slash slash 192.168.1.54 colon 8080. Don't worry, there's no test at the end of this, there's, uh, so you don't have to remember that. <laughs> but if you're in, I'm in my house at the moment, in my sort of home office, and if you're on the same network of me with any device, if you're a BYOD school and the kids have got different phones, different tablets, different laptops, uh, desktops, if you put this into any browser, you will see in the browser what is happening in this app. Now that's magical because it means if you're, and this is always a good backup plan, if your projector bulb blew, and touch wood, I've never had a projector bulb blow, but if you lost the projector, but all the kids had a device, and it doesn't matter what the device is, so long as they're on the same network, and they are on, this, on the same Wi-Fi network, um, and they have a browser, that's all they need. Uh, unless I'll come back to the app again in a second. Um, and this is very good, it does other things, it's like the, down the bottom here, let me say down there. And you see a pointer, but that pointer doesn't do anything except point because it's on my Mac. In fact, the pointer. There are other ways to put pointers on here, uh, but um, anyway, with other apps, but not with this particular app. Now I'm going to close this app. I see. I think that just clears the screen. Let me just check that. It clears the screen. And press it again, and it clears the screen. So you've got a whiteboard, and you can draw on it. But remember, any. If you've used this URL in any machine in your classroom, you will see what is drawn on here. You will see anything that's drawn on here. And you can import pictures, and you can move pictures around. Um, and the name of the app again, let me go back. The name of the app is this one called AirSketch. Shingo, because it runs on your local Wi-Fi network, the delay is minimal. From my experience, it's minimal. Uh, it's usually very, in fact, it's mind-blowing. Um, good for kids, of course. If you've got a big class, you've got kids at the back who can't see the screen very well, it's great. They can look at it in their own screen. And of course, if they can look at it in their own, oh, thanks, Simon. Of course, they can look at it in their own screen. How much is it, Simon? Is it, is it a 2 one? Uh, not at the moment, it's 10.50 in Australia. 
Ten dollars. Wow, that's expensive. Okay, ten dollars. I'm going to show you another one, which is another two, which are very similar and, and cheaper. But this is my one of my favourite apps, though. Um, so if you've got children who are visually impaired and have difficulty seeing the screen at the front, then they can they can do this. And of course, if this is on their screen, if it's an iPad or an iPhone or whatever it is, they can take a screenshot. And I I think. For me, it sounds really strange. is is one of the most popular skills. Uh, one of the most popular skills to give any students or any teachers is how to do a screenshot on whatever machine they're using. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. Down in Australia, you get money from your 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 state. Authorities to spend on stuff, don't you? Every year you get a lump sum of money and you can buy an iPhone or something with it. <laughs> really? Okay. But that's a favourite. Now, I think while I'm staying on this theme, this theme of, of sharing like that, I'm going to share the one that's next to it. Um, do In your classrooms, do you, now I've been in some classrooms I'm, and I'm going to be in Australia again in the first week of July. Um, but I can't remember seeing visualizers in classrooms. Visualizers being those devices that, you know, it's a bit like an old overhead projector, but it has a camera and the camera's pointing downwards onto the onto the desk and so you can put a book under there and people can see the book projected. Um, I, I mentioned where I am, Carol, in, in, before the end promise. Um, uh, so visualizers, do you have visualizers? Are you using visualizers in your classrooms? They're actually quite expensive oh, no, no. pieces of equipment. Okay. Well, what BoardCam wants to do, BoardCam, BoardCam, it's B-O-A-R-D-C-A-M, and uh, Simon is now going off to the iTunes store to find out where it is. Um, BoardCam, their philosophy is to change your iPhone or your iPad into a visualizer. Let me just touch it. <laughs> Actually, it looks a little bit like the last one we looked at, um, but you can see the uh, the um, color bars at the top here. We can still import different things. Um, I can draw here down the down the bottom. Bottom here, there's a there's a, an eraser, so I can erase things out there. You can do mind mapping. You can do a number of different things. I'm not going to go through this. You, you can put labels on here, new labels, stored labels. So if you had a picture there, you could actually have students moving a label, demonstrating that. Um, there's another option here of sources, and sources allows me either to connect it to a video camera to use the vid, not connect it. Rubbish that was to use the video camera in the iPad or the iPhone, or to get pictures out the photo library, or to do video streaming. Now, if I use the video camera, let's see, let's see what happens if I switch the video camera on. You're going to see my desktop. <laughs> I bet there's some lag with that. Here's, uh, can you see my desktop? In fact, if I put my finger. Yeah, probably the lag is too... Uh, okay, so here's a watch. Here's my watch. Here's my Makey Makey, which I bought recently but I haven't tried yet. Makey Makey is a electronics thing from MIT. Um, but if you were doing something small with students, like you're going to dissect a frog or you're going to cut up an eyeball, uh, many schools around the world now, for health and safety reasons, sadly, don't allow you to sort of dissect eyeballs anymore, um, then you could do it here and it would be very easy to see in the class. Um, and you could, of course, have, I could change this to be vertical so it was looking straight down, so it was looking straight down at some some paper or, you know, so here we go. There's there's the plans for, for this session. And this session isn't, isn't working out to be a... Uh, to be a, um, a smackdown. It's a session with me talking. Are you still happy with that? I need to check this. Okay. 
uh, I'm only slightly hesitant because you may be sitting there saying, I want to talk about this app. If you do, put it in chat, please, because uh, I'm very keen to, to know about uh, um, any, any others. Um, question there was, what's the difference between video streaming and uh, uh, chat? Video stream is find a URL where a video stream can be found. You see that's come up. Now, I've never tried it. If I put a YouTube address in there, and I'm not going to try it, so if you buy this app and you, well, this is one thing you can try yourself. This is your homework. Uh, this is a, this is <laughs> welcome to the flipped webinar series where you have to do stuff at home before the webinar series. Um, so I have a feeling if you put a YouTube video uh, address into here, that it would show the video in here, um, which is interesting. Okay, let me cancel that. Uh, you tap to save your session. And that's the other thing about this one, which the other one didn't do, is down the bottom right hand corner here is a record button. So if you were using this particular app to do a dissection of a frog or an eyeball, don't, I, I don't know why they've come to mind. Whatever it was, you're doing, you're building something or you're sharing cursive writing, whatever is being demonstrated there, whatever the student, whatever is being demonstrated there, you can record it. Now, it sounds like I'm putting the emphasis on the teacher here, I'm not, because, uh, and I think we all agree here that the, the power of the learning here is not us doing things up on a projector, it's that the kids having these apps on their own machines and also on, uh, uh, and then producing stuff. So this would be an easy way of a student recording something practical that they were doing. It could be a math exercise, moving matchsticks around to, to do particular things. The few buttons on the top here, you can change it to be wide angle or an autofocus. You can freeze it. They've even got a button here which does a screenshot for you, so you can do a screenshot there as well. Uh, and, uh, and I think also this is, a, this is a zoom here, if I remember rightly. Yeah, that's it. on the top right-hand corner is a zoom function. Um, so I'm going to stop that. I there are dozens of these. Um, the other one, so that was Air Sketch was the first one. Oh, so I let me go through chat. Uh, <laughs> you haven't found Camboard yet, have you? Have you, Simon? I, I tell you, one of the thing, one of the interesting things for me is. I find it quicker to go to Google and search for an app, which then takes me to the apps library or the iTunes library. I find that's usually more successful than actually going to the iTunes library and searching for the app, Camboard. Um, I don't know what, what your experience is like of that. Oh, it's up there in chat. Great, thanks. Uh, how much was it? Let me have a look. So that's cheaper. Now the other one I think would be uh, would be Stage. There would be Stage, which does something very similar to these. Um, and these are must-have. This type of app I think is a must-have app, especially when you can do it on your machine uh, and transmit it over the Wi-Fi to other apps in the room. Especially if you're a B, bring your own device, bring your own technology school. Where the kids have all got different devices. Um, Actually, well, let's stay in this one because this directory, uh, this folder, not directory, is where I put stuff that I use more, most regularly. Um, my favorite timer is this one. It's called Timer on Fire. Uh, and uh, it's a great timer. You can see, I see, um, the TED Talks, this is a good one to do. If you, 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 whatever your timing, you can have a set time where it just, Go, it starts at zero, it goes for 10 minutes or so, or it can be a stopwatch type timer and you can, uh, and you can uh, uh, have a countdown as well. That's my favorite timer. There are dozens of timers. So that's purely personal. I, I, I quite like that. This one is called iSigns HD. And that's the one uh, that I used earlier where if, for example, if I'm doing a presentation and somebody says, what's the URL of that page? And I've got a browser up there. I'll take the URL and just drop it into here. Sorry. Large text. 
not, not this one, large text, this one. I'll drop it into here, and it makes it very big. And this is editable. If I double click on it, I can put other text in there. So everybody can see it in the room very easily. Rather than, because if you've got a browser up on your screen on the projector, people can't see what the URL is. Um, actually, this one is a fun one. I signs HD. I think it's free. It's just got lots of uh, signs, you know. At the end of the lesson, I may well just bring this up. Uh, <laughs> it's just, just a fun thing to put up there. Uh, let's go away from that. You can experiment with those yourselves. Let me just look. Google Maps is here. Now, I should have put this in the map section, but Google Maps uh, is here because I, it's the mapping app that I use most. I'm going to come back to photo table in a moment because that's my, that's a, this is really high on my list. It will be, it will be in my top 10. Any of the others here I've mentioned? I don't think so. Flat Stanley. Does anybody do Flat Stanley? Is Flat Stanley done in Australia? Did, do you know what, who Flat Stanley is? Okay. Well, there's a, well Flat Stanley, is, start, the author of it died, has died, I think. He, it was a book, and Flat Stanley was a cutout which you sent through the post to other schools around the world. So it was a geography exercise. And uh, you send it to a school in Indonesia and say, take a picture of it, a Flat Stanley, in your school or in somewhere in Indonesia, and, and send us a photograph by mail before the internet or early on in the internet. But there's an app now for Flat Stanley. So I think it's a free app, so you can take pictures with your mobile device and Flat Stanley is there, or Flat Stanley's sister, or whoever, and uh, collect them that way. Good for geography there. Are there any apps where your students can interact directly? So, Shingo, are you saying, is there a whiteboard where all the students in the class can collaborate, can write on at the same time. Is that right? OK. Now, I'm guessing there is an app. But my, uh, but what I would do is I'd actually bring up a browser. And I have to go to Shambles here, because I, so this is the Shambles website. Make it a bit bigger. I'm going too fast. Oh, I'm going to look at idea flights, Carol. Maybe you could tell us about that in a second. And I'm going to do a whiteboard here. And actually, we could try this now, but I'm going to say, suggest we don't because we've only got 10 minutes left. And I'm going to this page on Shambles. And uh, it's got lots of interactive whiteboards that work inside mobile devices. And you can see this one at the top is, is the latest one to go on this list. And this one uh, is a collaborative whiteboard and does work on iOS devices. So if you had your students go to this address, then you can get, uh, and there's no student sign up. Uh, teachers can have students to cut. So they've thought about about how they're organizing this for a class. So that's one to, to, to do. Um, Carol, do you want to talk about idea flight? I don't know that. Hi. Yeah. Um, I haven't actually been able to use it live with a group. But I've been toying around with the idea of how it could really be very, very beneficial if you were doing a, a small workshop where everyone had an iPad and you wanted them to actually see on their iPad screen what you were showcasing, whether it's just a set of simple slides wouldn't matter. And when you set it up, you, you can actually select your role as being the passenger or the pilot. So if, if I... Like I'm doing that now, you can't see what I'm doing, but uh, when I go in as a pilot, then I can control what the passengers will see. And I think there's an option in there, and I'll have to explore it in a little more depth in a moment, 
for you, Simon, I think there's an option in there where they can actually annotate onto what they're seeing as a passenger. Okay. But the question was to share a collaborative whiteboard rather than just uh, text for me to say what I'm going to say now. And I notice that Simon, thank you, Simon, tell me uh, your address and I'll send you a check for the advertising. <laughs> Simon has mentioned shambles pad. Uh, and let me just show you that, um, which is a back channel tool just for text. There's lots of back channel tools for text where on any device, and this is a nice thing if you've got children bringing in their own devices, which most schools aren't doing yet. Uh, it's a bit frightening to have a class of kids and they've all got something different. It's very unnerving. And that's where tools like Sketchlot helps out because it doesn't matter. As long as they have a connection to the internet, and a web browser, um, then then these tools are really good. Sketchlot would work for a collaborative whiteboard. There are others underneath on this list. Make sure you have a oh, make sh ha make sure that you have a look at the others that are here. There's a lot down here. Here's a, here's one: how to use your iPad as a digital whiteboard. And there's some others. Here's another one: Scribboard. Uh, works in a browser, including iOS devices. But if it was just text you wanted to share as a back channel tool, now in, in, I've heard it in several of the R-series webinars that people have, that, that one particular back channel tool has been mentioned a lot, and that's Today's Meet. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? Today's Meet is a good back channel tool where in a browser, regardless of your device that you're looking at it on, and it can be anywhere in the world that you could be looking at it, then people can collaborate. But I have one myself, um, which is called Shambles Pad. Let me just go to it. And this is it here. And it's shamblespad.com. And you can create, and this is free, I've set it up and it's on servers in Denmark of all places. I've set it up in, on servers in Denmark. And uh, it's using the old, and, 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 and if you've been around for a while, you'll recognize the name. It, it, was, it was Etherpad, which was a company uh, which created this. And about four years ago, Google bought Etherpad to do real-time collaborative typing and they incorporated it into their Google Docs. And that's, how Go that's the engine that Google Docs uses, is the old Etherpad. And the, the education world went bananas because it was so well liked and so well used. And then Google bought it and a month later switched it off. But bless their hearts, Google did then acknowledge what they'd done. They said, OK, we'll make it open source. And the Etherpad Foundation was set up. And they've actually developed it now so that it's uh, more than it was before. So I'm, I've taken that open source software and put it on a server so you can use it there for free uh, 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 with your classes. And you just, you just, you know, if you had, if you have three children working in a group and they wanted a collaborative tool, you could use this. But of course, if your school is a Google Docs school, then you'd use Google Docs. This is a sort of quick and easy way of creating a collaborative work area. Uh, and maybe that would be a good topic for a future webinar, which would, which would be collaborative uh, um, tools or collaborative places like this for groups to set up. Uh, actually, I'd, I'd enjoy that. I'd like to hear what, what you're doing there. Now, as we've only got five minutes left, I want to mention highlight one here called photo I'm going to do I'm really going to do it quickly now uh, photo table is is brilliant it's a well kept secret it was actually free in that's gone free a while ago um, but if you're writing things down to experiment with I love photo table it enable it's like a it is like a photo table on your desk and you can drag pictures in and move them around it's a good alternative to PowerPoint, actually. It's a great presentation tool. It's a great storytelling tool. Um, it has some hidden features. One of the hidden features is, is if you have sets in Flickr, the photos, you can actually download a complete set into Photo Table. So I would, I would mention that, that one. Um, 
I me, mean, I don't want to go there. I'm going to go to... Uh, so I'm going to go fast, so don't worry, I'll stop and give it time to refresh for you. I'm going to go to some on this one. I'm going to go to, have a look in here, Picker, and have a look in this one called Seating Plans. Um, Picker. So if you have you have a situation in your class where you've got a group and they, or you've got to choose one student for doing something, you want to choose them at random, there's some lovely apps here for doing that. Or you have a group of four children and, wh and one of them has to volunteer for something but they don't want to volunteer, then you can use these. I call them pickers. I'm, I don't know if that's the official name for them. Uh, you see this one's called Pupil Picker, uh, 3D Coin Cross Picker, Staff Picker, Selector is quite a nice one, Decide Now is quite nice. Decide Now is nice because um, say you were doing a staff meeting and three and six of you were doing presentations at a staff meeting or a professional development event and you were going to choose which one went first at random. You could use something like Decide Now, another one called Name Selector and, and Pick Me Buzzer. Um, I think Pick Me Buzzer can work across multiple devices and it's the first one that presses a button. So that's Picker, which is classroom tour and I had a I had a situation last year where I was going to a presentation with about I don't know, 30 teachers and I'm terrible at remembering names and I wanted to do a seating plan and I thought right I'll use it <laughs> I'll use the iPad I will not use a piece of paper and a pen I'll use the iPad and find an app where I can do a seating plan now, I used to be a secondary school teacher, not a primary, so, and I was teaching mainly science and physics. And so I was in that secondary situation where every hour or hour and a half, you get a different set of kids coming into the labs. And I'm not good with names uh, in that situation. And so I used to do a seating plan uh, in those days. And I'd take a picture of the kids and do it photographically uh, in, a, in something like Photoshop. But here, I couldn't find one app which would do a seating plan unless you searched for <laughs> weddings because many of these seating plans are designed for wedding receptions. Don't ask me why. Maybe they just see that that's a, a, a group that sells well. Um, but you know, some of these are, 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 are quite good. I can't remember which is my favorite now because it's a while since I've used it. I think it was, let me just check, this one. It was this one. It was Seating Planner. So you can see, here I am with a group of teachers. And I took a photograph with the iPad of the group of teachers. And it just imported into Seating Plan. And I could then type in their names and put their names over them in the real picture. But you can see what I've done with this is I've actually drawn from a template the desks. And I put their names around the desks over the picture. I think I was going over the top there, but I may have been uh, demonstrating. Uh, I may have been sort of showing what's available there anyway. Uh, and of course, on the top right-hand corner here, you've know, you got the option where you can export them, export to photos, and then you could, you could uh, tweet it or Facebook it or whatever you wanted to once it's in photos, or email it even, or print it. So that's, that's that, that one. We had some questions at the beginning about apps gone free, air sketch come over. Great. Um, let me just check at the top again. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to. English and history apps, organizing collections. Organizing collections. I'm on the right page here, am I? No, create. I'm looking for curation. It's not on here, on this one. Let me just go back. Here we go. It's on this page. Here I have a folder of curation tools. And we talked about these in previous webinars. There's webinars on all of them individually. And uh, Scoop It is my, uh, it's probably my favorite. All the big ones have got uh, curation tools. Pearl Trees, Paperly, Samify, Pinterest, Dex, um, Learnist, Live Binders. 
Um, <laughs> um, so you can see, and I think all of these are free. I don't think I paid for any of these. Uh, I've, got, I've put that one here. Do you, I don't know if you're like me, and I'm going to stop just in one minute. You sometimes get an app and you don't know which folder to put it in because news me is one which could be a news one or it's one where you can actually curate news items and put them together I like a curation tool. I wish you could make shortcuts of apps so that you could have them in more than one place on your iPad but I don't think you can do that. Maybe with iOS 7 which is supposed to be coming out next month then we'll be able to do that. Actually I, I I said that was the last, I'm, and I'm aware that I didn't cover what you requested at the beginning, but I'm going to cover one more, which I think is free, which I'm going to mention one more for you to look at, because I think it illustrates pulling data in for children to investigate really well, and it's a geography one. See, the English ones you wanted to know are here, but we, we, we won't do that. You can have a whole webinar on just English apps, but I'm going to go into geography. And I want to make you aware of just one of these apps. And it's this one. It's called Xquake. X-Q-U-A-K-E. I have a feeling it's free. But what it does is it brings in real-time live data about earthquakes and volcanoes around the world. And you can see it's doing that now. And it tells you... Uh, so for geography or environment, it's it's brilliant. Uh, and I'm not going to demonstrate it because I think there's too much lag. But I think what I am going to do is stop because it's on time. The golden rule is whatever we do, we stop on time. Okay, Carol, warnings. Uh, um, oh, sorry, I thought it was a warning in an ad. Back to you. Oh. Dan Bulls, um, AJ has a question for you there. Hi, um, I was just wondering, we were looking at the curation tools a minute ago, um, if you've settled on something that you like or performs the same task as the uh, Google Reader, which of course has, has been retired. I loved my Google Reader and um, I'm still sort of looking around on what works and asking people why it works for them. Um, I think there'll be a range of opinions, but I, I like to ask everyone. I have a, a list on shambles here of uh, uh, some of the the other RSS aggregators and readers that people have written about to be uh, sorry, let me try and make that bigger. So you see, there's there's people who've written a number of reviews of trans of alternatives here. So you might like to have a look at that. You just go to shambles.net and search for, don't, don't remember the URL, just search for RSS. Oh, the first week of, uh, of uh, actually, I, the only reason I'm hesitating is I, I can't remember the school because um, it's all being um, coordinated by uh, sort of like an agent in, in uh, uh, Sydney. So I want to give you where you would find details here. I'm going to scoop it and I have an area on scoop it. <laughs> I'm doing this on my iPad which is a bit weird. Uh, an area on scoop it called EdTech conferences and CPD events Asia or close. Uh, and down here, I should put this into, but you can't read that. And somewhere down here, it says in Singapore. There we go, Shambles Guru in Australia. Um, and I really can't remember the school. I'd have, to, I'd have to go back into my email to look. 
but if you want, but I think that the company uh, um, is. Uh, hang on, let me just let me just check that. Um, they're called CyberSigns, a company, and you can see there's an email there uh, to Jody in CyberSigns, and it's probably best to drop an email to Jody. J O D I E. Oh, J O D I E at Cyber dot com. Have I spelled that right? No, I've not spelled that right. There's no R in it. So if you dropped a note, cybersigns dot com. Oh, dot AU should be in there. Sorry about that. Dot AU uh, should be there as well. Okay. Um, so if you drop Jody a line, or you f the links in that in that scoop it. Actually, while I'm here, if you don't mind, I'm going to share another scoop it I've got, which could be really helpful uh, if you're planning professional development. And I have another scoop it, which is really quite popular, which is events online. And this lists lots and lots of free events online for teachers, Com online conferences, webinars, streaming, and all sorts of stuff like that. Oh, uh, really? CyberSize, I think, made their name in Sydney through library services, but they've 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 moved out now. Well, I think you might find the MOOC is already in Scoopit. Uh, I think you might. That check. You need if you if you check in there, have a look around because there are three or four pages of events listed, Carol. So, uh, but if you don't see it, you can email me the the, the URL, or even just put it into chat now, and uh, I'll I'll add it. But it's probably there already, I think. But if not, I'll add it. No problem. As a curation tool, I love Scoop it. <laughs> so how was that, boys and girls? I'm feeling guilty of really not playing the collaborative role too much, although Chatter's helped with that. I've been a bit like the sage on the stage. Okay, let me click that. I think from okay. past experience I'll, I'll that presenters do, um, I don't think as a as a participant tonight that I've felt like that. I've been following, I've been watching, and I've been learning through you doing the experimenting. So um, I guess apologies for making it, you feel like you were talking and not sure if everything was you know, computing and going through. But as we're regulars um, here in this space, I'm sure we would have uh, spoken up or put something in the chat if we'd wanted to know more. So I think it, it all worked well. Thanks very much, um, Chris. I've got a big long list of apps I'm going to have a look at tomorrow on our school iPad. Maybe add a few and see if the kids like them. Uh, and I'm sure everyone feels the same way. It's been really great just to see all the different things and seeing them working. So uh, thank you very much, Chris. I'm just going to um, turn recording off.